So the first thing first, if you look at, we're no different to when Eleanor Roosevelt joined a whole bunch of men to draft the Declaration of Human Rights, the UNDHR, in 1948, um, in the sense that when they gathered, they gathered post-war, post-World War II, and you just had massive genocide and, um, across Eastern Europe and the like. And so uh, the, the reason, if you look at the crafting of the preamble of the UDHR, some of the wordings they used were some, you know, some, anything that outrages the conscience of humanity. And if you look at the draft provisions, they're so generically drafted that in my view, it's still relevant today, uh, regardless, and it, it applies to the digital world. Um, and um, in the context of should there be more rights, uh, you know, the UDHR is soft law. <laughs> it's, it's soft law and it's just a declaration. It's, it's generically applicable to all countries. But uh, you have, obviously you have, uh, you know, other instruments like the ICCPR and the ICESCA and different countries uh, choose either to ratify or not to ratify. The US, for example, is not ratified the ICCPR. So in terms of rights to privacy, that's, um, you know, in terms of international law. And, you know, countries differ constitutionally and that sort of thing in different approaches. Uh, but as you can see from, um, so take for example from privacy, you have uh, the APEC privacy framework and you have principles. So generally the IGF, what's, what's, what's to celebrate about the IGF is, is, you know, you can move towards celebrating best uh, you know, guidelines or principles, uh, if that makes any sense.